Hello class, welcome to Geometry Lesson 10.5, which is all about secant lines and segments. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use angle measures and segment lengths formed by intersecting lines and circles to solve problems. Okay, let's jump in with example one, where we relate secants and angle measures. So first of all, what is a secant? So I know this is a new word for you. Um, a secant, though, is a line, ray, or segment that intersects a circle at two points. So it goes through the circle. So in this picture, we have secants line AC and line BD. And if you look at the picture, you can see that those two lines intersect at point E and they form angle one. We wanna figure out how can we use these arc measures in order to figure out what that angle one measure is. So first of all, if I were to relate this to some previous knowledge, I can draw AB in. That way I have the nice little triangle, triangle AEB. And then if you look, since angle BAC, so that would be this angle right here, is inscribed, so we learned about this yesterday, uh, we know that angle A is one half of this arc length. And since ABD, this one right here, angle ABD is also an inscribed angle, we know that it's one half of the arc down here. So if we can figure out what those arcs are, if we had numbers for them, we would be able to solve this problem. Let's recall a little bit more from our uh, previous knowledge. So this is going way back to chapter four when we first started learning about triangles, we learned about something called triangle exterior angle theorem. So if you remember, we had triangles like this, and we said that these two angles added together equal this exterior angle. And that's what we're talking about in this problem. So measure of angle one equals the measure of angle a, B, D, so that's the green angle that I've highlighted, and the measure of angle B, A, C, so the blue angle I have highlighted. Or, if I want to rewrite that, I know that the measure of angle A, B, D is one half of the measure of the arc A, D, and one half of the measure of the arc B, C. So another way I could write that is since they have a one half in common, I could just say we're gonna add the two arcs together and multiply by one half. That was the wrong letter, there we go. So another way to write it is have a one half on the outside. So if I add these two arcs together and multiply by one half, I figure out what the measure of angle one is. This lesson is gonna be filled with formulas for you. So let's talk through what some of those things are. So theorem 1010 is what we basically just walked through why it's true. Uh, theorem 1010 is stating that if I add the two arc measures together, multiply by one half, I get these interior angles there. So angle one. Then theorem 1011. This is where we're going to have another case one, case two, and case three situation. Um, it's all roughly the same idea though. So the measure of an angle formed by two lines that intersect outside of a circle. Yesterday we dealt with where the intersection point was on the edge of the circle. Now we've moved outside of the circle. So all of those points intersect outside of our circle. Okay. And it's half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. So remember, difference means we're subtracting. Half means that we're multiplying by one half. Or if you don't like to multiply by one half, just divide by two. Case one, if it intersects and it looks like this, in order to solve for angle one, this angle formed outside of the circle, you take your farthest arc and you subtract your closer arc 
Once you have a number there, then you multiply by one half. Same idea here. If I'm solving for angle two, I take my arc that's farther and subtract the one that's closer, multiply by one half. And you can see that that picture looks just a little different because one of the lines looks like it's a tangent. It doesn't go through the circle, but then the other one does. Now, what if both lines are tangent? That's case three. So to find angle three, I take the arc that's the farthest, subtract the arc that's the closest, and multiply by one half. This is a great thing to take a screenshot of because it's nice to have this reference point that you can pull up this picture when you're doing your homework. All right, example two. If I want to figure out what the measure of angle ABD is, that's this angle right here, the way that I figure that out is I do one half, so I'm just going to call it angle B, one half times the larger arc, the one that's farthest away, that's my 151 degree arc, minus the arc that's closer. But if I look at that picture, I don't actually know what that measure is. So how can I figure out what that measure is? I can say there's 360 degrees in a circle. I already have a 151 degree angle and a 139. So if I subtract those, I'm left with that final part of the arc and that's 70. So I'm gonna do 151 minus 70 inside my parentheses. Now if I multiply all of that together, I end up with 40.5 for an answer. Okay, if you have a question about that, please don't hesitate to ask. Let's look at another example. So that first one, fairly straightforward, just numbers. What if we get some variables? So this time, I'm going to take my angle outside. That's the key here. That's what always repeats. The angle outside equals one half times the arc that's the farthest away. So I'm going to say 6x plus 6 minus 3x minus 5. Now some of you are going to rush through this or try to do it in your head, and you're going to drop a negative and get this question wrong. So let's make sure that we're doing things correctly. The first thing I am going to do is I'm going to move that 1 half over. So multiplying by 1 half to undo that, I can multiply by 2. So this becomes 78, or sorry, not 78. I can do math, I promise. 68 equals, and then I have... 6x plus 6 minus 3x minus 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 6x minus 3x. That means I have 3x left. I'm going to say 6 minus negative 5. Minus a negative 5 becomes a plus. So I have 68 equals 3x plus 5. And when 68 equals 3x plus 5, by plus 5, I mean, my bad, I'm apparently still half asleep. 6 plus 5 is not 5, that is most definitely 11. My apologies. Even, even teachers are human, guys. Promise. Although I think you already knew that. I mess up a lot, don't I? Um, but I'm going to say I do it on purpose to help you learn. We have, if we subtract 11 from both sides, we have 57 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3, I get x equals, that would be 19. Now I'm questioning all of my mental math. But yes, it is 19. So I have now solved for x. However, I'm not done. That's not my question. I'm being asked, what is the measure of arc length LM? So I'm going to take that 19 and I'm going to plug it back in. I'm going to say 6x instead of x. I'm going to say 19 plus 6. And if I do that, I end up with 120 as my answer. 
So make sure, like always, when you solve for x, that doesn't mean that you're done. That means you need to double check to make sure that's what the directions were asking. Now I want you to go ahead and solve this problem. Good luck. Okay, for this problem, hopefully you realize that angle one is the measure that gets put on its own, or not angle one, but the angle 107 gets put on its own, and I say equals one half of the arcs added together. So I said 74 plus x because I didn't know what this arc length was down here. And then I moved the one half over by multiplying by two. So I had 214 equals 74 plus x. Subtract 74 from both sides, and the measure of arc Wx is 140. If you have questions about that, please don't hesitate to ask. And I want you to try another problem. Good luck. Okay, for this problem, hopefully you realize we were solving for the angle that was outside of the circle. So you said that was x, or whatever variable you want. And you said equals one half the larger arc minus the smaller arc. And since we didn't know what the smaller arc was, I took the entire circle. I subtracted 152 minus 126, and that's how I got that 82 right there. So then I plugged the 152 and the 82 into the formula. I said x equals 1 half times the quantity of 152 minus 82. And that is 70, so 1 half of 70 is 35. If you have questions about that, don't hesitate to ask for some help. Let's move on. So we've talked about, you know, solving for angles, but that's only part of these types of problems. The other part is to figure out how long these segments are. So theorem 1012 is all about solving for segment lengths, okay? If you look at case one, we have two lines that cross in the circle, and there's nothing outside of the circle. The way that this works is, if I want to solve for any of these values, I can say A times B. So you see how those are the two parts that form the same chord? Okay, hopefully you see that. Then, if you take C times D, when you do that, they should be equal. So A times B should equal C times D. Usually what happens when you're solving these problems is you're given three of those four numbers and you just have to plug them into this formula and then you can solve from there. Now case two and case three get slightly more complicated, but not too bad. So the way that case two works is let's say both of the lines cut through the circle and meet outside of the circle. The way it works is you take the portion that's outside of the circle and you multiply it by the sum of the two. So in this case, n plus m. And you set it equal to the outside of the circle times the quantity of q plus p in this case. And then you can solve from there. So again, this is where they give you a bunch of numbers or a few numbers and then you end up solving for one of them. Now case three, again fairly simple, but what if one of our lines is a tangent? It doesn't actually go through the circle. The way you solve for that is you take that line that's all by itself, it doesn't cut through the circle, it's feeling kind of lonely, so you square it and you set it equal to the same idea that we did in case two the outside of the circle times the sum of the two parts of the segment. Okay, so if there is a tangent or something that doesn't go through the circle, you square it and you set it equal to the other line added together multiplied by the part outside. Again, this is a fantastic thing to take a screenshot of because when you get to your homework, you could excuse me, you can say, what picture does it match? Find the formula, and hopefully you'll start to see the patterns so you won't be solely dependent on referencing your notes, but I know that takes time to get there. Uh, you do have to know all of these things for your test. I am not giving you any of these things, uh, so you need to make sure that you are really studying and paying attention 
to the patterns. Okay, you can't just be dependent on your screenshots. They're a good place to start for studying, not not you know great for relying on them. So let's try solving this problem. If I referenced back to the last page, it is a case three situation where I have a line that doesn't go through the circle. It's by itself and then it has one line that does go through the circle. So I take the number that's lonely and I square it and I set it equal to the outside number times the sum of the other two the other segments. So a plus 9. Now if I simplify this, I have 36 equals a times a is a squared plus 9a. And then what I can do is I can subtract 36 from both sides. So I have 0 equals a squared plus 9a minus 36. And from there, I can do a couple of things. My options include doing some uh, Pythagorean theorem, if I would like, or, not sorry, not Pythagorean theorem. I've lost my mind, you guys. Uh, <laughs> quadratic formula. You can do some quadratic formula to solve this. Or if you remember how to factor, we can also factor. So I'm going to actually factor this. I'm going to say what multiplies to negative 36 and adds to a positive 9. Well, if I did a plus, let's see, positive 9, that would be 12 and 3. So a positive 12, a negative 3, and those are going to be my two possible numbers. So if I am solving my options, let's see which ones actually make sense. Does it make sense to have a 12? Or actually, hang on. Let me back up. I'll finish, I'll finish the problem. Then the last thing that you have to do is you take everything inside your parentheses, set it equal to zero. Everything inside your parentheses, set it equal to zero. So I have a equals negative 12 or a equals 3. I can't have a negative number for distance, right? So my answer has to be 3. If you didn't remember how to factor, remember there's always the quadratic formula that you can use to help you solve these problems. I know it's been a while since some of you guys have worked with this, but if you need a refresher, let me know and I'm more than happy to uh, remind you how to solve that type of problem. Okay, so some of these problems are going to involve you factoring and or using the quadratic formula. I guess it's not an and. Factoring or using the quadratic formula. I promise you I won't make you do both on the same problem. Okay, question three. I want you to go ahead and solve this problem on your own. Good luck. Okay, for this problem, hopefully you said 4 times x equals 8 times 5 because you take the parts of the same segments and multiply them together. So that's how I got 4 times x and 5 times 8. So I had 4x equals 40. Divide both sides by 4, you get x equals 10. So EC equals 10. And here's your concept summary. So if you have not already taken screenshots or perhaps you like to take as few of screenshots as possible. This is the one to get a screenshot of. It has everything that we talked about. It has all of the pictures. It gives you the basic formulas to solve them. Uh, so I highly recommend this is a great thing to take a screenshot of. It even tells you this is how you solve segments. This is all how you solve angles. Great thing to take a screenshot of. But as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm more than happy to assist you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.